I mean, I have I have the ballot open anyways, and okay. I normally don't even look at that that whole list. I think right. just because I don't know. All right, welcome to uh, the six four league rankings, thirty three through twenty five. Um, a little short on some people, but to uh, compensate for that, we have KD three here and Low as always. KD three, thanks for joining. Thanks Absolutely for participating. Um. I gotta do some some things. So why don't you guys talk about uh, your general feelings towards the rankings, the placements so far, like in this bracket? Um, I mean, I, I kind of expected a few people. Um, I think it was pretty accurate. You know, there's always there's always room to debate, like a couple here and there. But I feel like this uh, I feel like this group is pretty solid. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have much input on that. I feel like I, we all knew these people were going to be in this next year. So it's like, it, it's all a matter of where everyone would be specifically. And for the most part, people can move up and down like one one or two spots. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was saying, I, I voted myself, I put myself at about 39. Um, I was kind of surprised to see myself a, a couple of spots. I, think, I feel like I was three spots ahead of what I predicted. Um, and Lo, you said yourself, you put, you put me at what? 38, 39. Yeah. Yeah. I had you at 38. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, like I said, it's only a couple spots difference, but, um, I thought, I thought I was like two or three spots ahead of so, what I predicted. Yeah. So we could just, uh, jump straight into it, I guess, and talk a little bit about you. Uh, do you have the slide super? I do. I was trying to, I was trying to get the other ones working too. So if you guys wanted to, I can do it like super fast. So All right, well, KD can talk about himself a little bit yeah. and his year. Yeah, KD3 you can talk and then about. I'll chime in yep, yep. on my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, so if we're just going by each tournament. SmashCon, I um, I didn't really, you know, play many many people. Going up to D1, I, all I played was, uh, I think, Raichu. And, you know, I beat him, and then I lost to round one in top 32. I had to play Wangara. And then I lost to Robert. So, um, yeah, I, lo I, I lost to Robert at SmashCon. I also, like, we were talking about all the regional tournaments. I, I beat, I double eliminated Robert at, like, a monthly thing in, um, in PA Raider here. Bowl. Yeah, it was at the Raider Bowl. And that, we didn't have a lot of people there, but that had some good talent. Like, I know Shears and Finio were there. Bark, um, Yobo Light, Rusty came out. They, some good representation from MVP. Um, so I beat him there, and then you know he, he beat me at uh, SmashCon. Um, so uh, SmashCon, I didn't get a whole lot of data. You know, Robert was my one like you know really close game. You know, someone like really close to my level, and um, that was about it. And then uh, Shine, Shine was uh, where I, I beat Shears there. Um, I lost to Wizard, but I lost to Dark Horse. And I think I ended up at what ninth at Shine. Is that uh, right? Super? I can actually check that for you. We Shine. had we had Frey come in for a minute, and I was like, "Oh, oh, surprise guest!" But he, oh, there he is. Yeah, you better stay. Well, hello, Frey. All right, so Frey's not talking. All right, My so I was uh... glitched. <laughs> uh, so that's why I left. Okay. I'm gonna go fix it. Okay. I'll be back. Okay, so you said shine, 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 shine. Yeah, you got ninth at shine. You lost to Wizardrobe and Dark Horse, and you beat Shears. Yeah, I beat Shears there. Um, so yeah, I mean Wizardrobe was you know expected, and then uh, Dark Horse. That was really, I don't know if you guys saw that was a really close set. That was uh, yeah. I didn't get to watch that. Uh, let's go back to your set with Robert though, because we talked a little bit about that yesterday. Uh, well, Robert talked about it himself because he was ranked yesterday. Oh, uh, that's he right. Said that, he said that you guys played Pika Falcon for the first two games, and then I guess he had the counter pick advantage, and he went Kirby. Yeah, so the the first game was really close. It was back and forth, uh, exchanging leads, um, and he clutched that one out. And then game two, uh, I think game two I solidly won. Like, it might have been a two stock or something like that. Uh, and then game three was... That was pretty close. He pulled away. I remember he pulled away at the end a little bit. 
with Kirby. He, uh, I forget if he got the one or it was a one or two stock. Um, so yeah, he won that first game and then just had the counter pick advantage because if he, uh, if I won that first game and even if he won game two, maybe I would have been able to do Pika against his Kirby. I mean, I don't really see him saying Kirby. He would go back to Pika, right? Right. Um, right. And then we would have just had like, you know, another Falcon Pika matchup. Yeah, that, that was, that was close though. Even, even when I beat him at Raider Bowl, um, I beat him twice, but it, each set was game five. You know, it was a 10 game, two sets. So we've had some really close sets. O- only got to play a couple times, but yeah, it, it kind of sucked that uh, you ended up losing to him at like a major, but you beat him at a regional. So I don't yeah, know yeah. how much that came into effect. Like people might have not even known that you beat him at Raider Bowl. I mean, yeah. I know, I know for the most part, some people did because Bark made that post, but and then the, you have the same thing with uh, Fire Blaster, where you beat him. Where did you beat him? I Keystone? beat him at Keystone. Yeah. Uh, he he beat me later at Keystone. We had a... Right, and then he beat you at Boss Battle. And he, he beat me at Let's Go, too. I'm actually, like, one in four against Fire Blaster. Yeah, we, we saw that, like, the, the other day. And we saw, like, how many wins and losses Fire Blaster accrued against people. Like, he beat CCG, but he also lost to CCG. Or he also beat, like... I don't remember the exact name, so I'm just kind of spitballing here. I think it was, like... He, he he lost to CTG. Oh no no, it's Hammerheart. Yeah, like he he beat Hammerheart, but he also oh, lost. He, to well, him. he beat Hammerheart. No, I think Hammerheart's so that, that's actually more. really lopsided. Like Hammerheart lost to him in um they were in the same placement pool at Keystone, so Hammerheart lost to him there, and then he double eliminated him later in Keystone in in the double elimination top sixteen. And since then, they've played a couple times too. Like they've played at some some other lab events. Like they played like at a, ESB. They played and... at ESB. Uh, boss battle. Like Hammer Hammerheart lost that first time, but since then Hammerheart's like total like seven and one against Fire Blaster. Dang. That's... Seven and one. Seven and one. Or like five and one or something like I that. I think he's like five and one. Yeah. Because I know. So he beat him at ESB. Boss battle, and then the two sets at Keystone, and then um I think at the did he they play, play at the last the recent lab. one? The they played at the lab one? monthly, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's five and one. I don't know where else they might have played. I have no idea, but yeah, Fire Blaster won that first set, and um. All right, well, yeah, we're going a little off track because this is actually about you. Um. So what else can we? All right, let's talk about your team's performance because that's kind of your whole blurb. Hell oh, yeah, Q wrote a lot about that. Um, but yeah, teams is awesome. I love uh, you know, I love performing in teams because. Uh, in a lot of ways, it means more than me. More to me, you know. You got your teammate relying on you. Um, I just think it's really fun uh, to to work well with someone that you, someone that you have a lot of chemistry with. Like I team with Hammerheart all the time, for the most part. And then uh, Lo and I team one time, and we took home, took home first at ESB. That was awesome. Yeah, that was really that was really fun. Um, me and Hammerheart have had a pretty good. Uh, we had some up and down performances. SmashCon, we didn't do too well. We got a. Uh, you know, we were. I don't know what we were seated. I think we were seated somewhere around like ninth. We we got we got thirteenth. We lost to uh, we we lost to dogs and Mad Rush, I think in winners, and then we ended up losing to um, Preston and Snorlax in losers. Um, so SmashCon was a little disappointing, but we had a great boss battle. We got we took home fourth at boss battle. Um. MVP moms, we we uh, ran all the way through winners, and we ended up losing to uh, Cactus and LD. They they had an awesome run at MVP moms. Um, no one. Oh, stop. that's where you took LD to game five. Oh, in singles, yeah, I, I forgot about that actually because that wasn't on stream or anything. So MVP moms uh, was a great tournament for me, um, and yeah, it, it was top eight, round one of top eight. Uh, we went back and forth like he. He might have won the first game, and then we just traded games the rest of the way, and then so we went ga- game five last time. You lost stock. to LD and Narwhal, right? Right. So, set one with LD was game five last stock. That was really close. I kind of, I really wish that was recorded, obviously. Um, and then against Narwhal, that was that was game five as well. So I had a really close set with him. Uh, that was that was a weird set. We did some Falcon dittos. Um, I think we ended up doing his Kirby against my Falcon was the final game. 
Um, but besides that, yeah, MVP Moms, I, I had a I had a good showing. I, I beat Star King. Um, I, I'm glad I got a run back with him because he beat me at a at a Baltimore monthly a while ago, and then and then that that was in loser semis. In losers quarters, I beat Clubba, and he beat me at the same tournament earlier on in uh, in D1 pools. And again with him, both both sets were Who game five. He? I was curious, who did Club go over she when he beat you? When he beat me, he beat me with uh, he beat me game five in uh, Pika Dittos. and he oh, okay. he he beat my he beat my Falcon earlier because that was a game five set. He beat my Falcon with DK, mm. and I went Pika a couple times with Pika. I beat his DK. I beat his Falcon, and because I think he went up two zero, so I almost reversed three out him, and then he he did the Ditto last game, and then he beat me. Okay. I remember, he, he wrecked me in the ditto, actually. I remember that. That was, that was like a three stock or something. Two All stock. Right. So I have everything paired up now. KD3, how do you feel about being paired in this tier? Do you feel that you are close to these people in skill that are in the same rank as, as this? Or do you feel that like maybe you got a little ranked higher than what you personally feel? Uh, you're talking just like... How I, you know, how I perceive my skill. Yeah, how you perceive your skill. Like, do you see yourself like going toe to toe with a lot of people at the, at this uh, level, or even? Yeah, I think them? I think it's fair. I mean, if we're, if we're looking at the people in this level. Um, you know, Fyro. Fyro, I, the first time I ever played him, he um, he beat me three one, and uh, but since then I've won like three or four sets in a row. So like th that that's one player matchup. Narwhal. Narwhal I've played twice actually. I played him at Let's Go and I played him at MVP Moms. And both sets, like the MVP Moms was game five. And Let's Go was game three last stock. So I've had a couple close sets with him. I just haven't been able to beat him. Uh, same with Low here. Uh, we've had, if, if we're just going by our major sets, where do we play? We played boss ESP battle and Boss Battle. ESP twice. Both of those were, you know, obviously ESP was game five last stock. Yeah, ESP uh, was really close, and then, uh, the, well, the second one, and then, um... Oh, yeah, you, you at, wrecked me at, in the first set. The first one was a best of three, and I, I think you went Puff, and I went Pikachu, so it was a little tough for you. Um, and then the boss battle one was really close also. Yeah, that was best of three as well, I remember that. That was Kirby Pika again. Um, you also killed yourself. I, I Honestly, I would have felt pretty bad. <laughs> Because you always, killed yourself at like ten percent. I'm always killing myself. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I was just upset that we had to play that uh, at boss battle because we had already played like so many sets prior. Yeah. Yeah. Over at the lab. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh. Against you know, stranded, it's hard to like compare ourselves to strand. That's like he's in such a weird spot, and we all know how good he is. Yeah. How do you feel um, about your uh your loss to LL? Because I know Hammerheart was telling me it's probably attributed to the fact that it was so cold. Yeah, I, you know, I'm. I never liked to John about really anything, but if I was ever gonna John, my hands were super cold. Um, we had to go. We played on stream on the one side of the venue. The other side of the venue, where the where my pools matches were, I felt fine. I, uh, you know, gra granted, none of the other players in in that pool were as good as LL was. Like LL was the second seed in that pool. Um, right. So you know, I, I beat everyone else, and I had to play LL. And I mean, you were there, like you remember how cold it was. Yeah, I was so mad about that actually, because I just couldn't move my hands. So I was like, "Fuck this! I'm going Pikachu." Yeah, I just it, I it was a bad set. I, my hands were really cold. I don't know. I remember that, right. but the cold, the cold right. hands, John. All right, so you, got, you guys want to have uh, closing thoughts on KD three, uh, so we can move on to Fyro. Uh, I don't don't really have any uh, closing thoughts on KD three, honestly. I was gonna ask like. Uh, what KD3 feels his strengths are as a player, like what, what propels him to be a little bit better than everyone else. Cause I, I am curious about his own mindset towards the game. And I wish I yeah, was. So I, yeah, I, I tell, ahead. I tell, um, a lot of the, a lot of the local players back at the lab, I always tell them, you know, one of the number one things that has gotten me a lot better all around is just playing different characters. Um, you know, and, and, you know, not just playing other characters, like getting good with quite a few characters. It helps me really understand the matchup. Like, like Puff is, I think, one of my best characters. Um, and so now, when I fl when I fight Puffs with a couple different matchups, I feel really confident. Um, Samus. I mean, I have Hammerheart to play Samus against. You know, to get that matchup experience. 
but I, you know, I started playing Samus myself and now I understand like a lot with Samus when, when I, you know, in case I ever have to play against her in tournament, right. um, I, I always tell him, you know, not even, you know, not even to make it like one of your tournament characters, just like play him and understand him. That really helps just having that matchup knowledge. Um, I think overall I've, I've like pretty good tech skill. Um, and, you know, I do rely on, you know, being able to move fast with uh, like someone like, you know, Pikachu or obviously Falcon. Um, I think I struggle against some some people that are like faster than me, like Stranded compared compared to his brother. You know, I really I really would struggle, I think, against Stranded because he's he's just faster than me. He would just and I think that, you. Yeah, I think, you know, I've played him a couple times. Um, I've never really played him in a super serious tournament. Like I played him at a New York Monthly and... But I mean, obviously, I was still trying. Like he, he wrecked me pretty hard. That was a while ago, though. But even even now, I think I would struggle against him because um, he's just faster than me, and that's yeah. one of my strengths. Usually, I bank on being faster than my opponent. Really interesting uh, because sorry to cut you off, but when I look at you and when I have played you in the very chances, I, you seem like more of a methodical thinker type of player, but not to the extent of Robert. Maybe maybe it's the nerd the nerd stereotype, you know, the glasses and whatnot. And, yeah, I don't know. It just. Um, it, I mean, it obviously depends what character. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be all super fast and technical for the most part if I'm playing as Puff, you know. Like, uh, but if I'm playing as Pikachu or Falcon, that's usually what I try. To, you know, that's not the whole game, obviously. But that's what I, I try to rely on. I'm usually in a position where I'm faster than the other guy. And when you when you take someone like Stranded, he, uh, he you know, he's just a step ahead. He's just faster. Um, I think sometimes that can screw me up. But obviously, like a really smart heavy neutral player like dark horse for example like dark horse is a good example like i've struggled against dark horse because i think he's just a really smart neutral heavy player but we also play some of the same characters so some kind of sometimes it can come down to some counter picks or you know so i can struggle against that too um but yeah i think one of my strengths is just knowing a lot of different matchups and feeling uh you know feeling confident even in matchups that aren't that good like, I feel pretty good as Kirby in the Pika matchup. I also haven't played that a lot. Like, I played that against Low a couple times. Um, oh, yeah, but, we played that at ESP. Yeah, we played it a boss battle, too. Oh, yeah, we did. The last game. Yeah, but, yeah. I had to start going Pikachu versus you because I know you were going to whip out the Kirby. All right, so I'm going to I'm gonna move on from KD3. So we can talk about you for a minute. Now, let's move on to uh, number 33. Uh, I want to hear more of Frey's opinion on this man because he happens to be a Ness main too. We have Fyro. Uh, Fyro, I, I'd have to let me look at his losses real quick. Frey, what do you, what do you think of Fyro overall? Um, hi. Hi. What's going on? Frey. Frey, are you there? Maybe he's collecting his thoughts about it. Maybe his audio is messed up again. Oh, man. Um, we'll, we'll give him a minute. I'll move to you, uh, Low. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Frey? I mean, let's just talk about, like, his uh, his wins and losses, right? Yeah. While Frey figures yeah. his audio out. Um, he doesn't have any, like, bad losses. I guess you could say his worst loss would be to me yeah um but i'm within this tier and i'm ranked ahead of him so yeah. i don't know how much you would count that as a bad loss um <clears throat> he lost to bark and he's lost to let me see bark stranded bark is zero stranded. prince yeah. is bark. this thing on yeah there you go can you hear me yep we can so, hear you. no oh, bad losses that? really oh. Hey. No bad losses. Uh, let's see his best wins. His best win would be so at ESV he beat Fire Blaster, Shears, and Dark Horse. And um, on the ballot it says he beat Stranded, but Stranded actually beat him and just jumped off the stage because he didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think those three wins, Dark Horse, Shears, and Fire Blaster, <laughs> are good. Yeah. Um, at SmashCon, he didn't really beat anyone. Yeah. He beat Mr. Sir. And but uh, again, he doesn't have any bad losses, and uh, it, it might be a little bit of a, a legacy thing that keeps Fyro, like, this high. I mean, he's a really good player, but I, I'm not too sure about it. 
I had him in this tier, but it, it can be debated. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you in that regard. Like, uh, he didn't, he had like a, he had a solid year for how good he is, but he didn't have like a standout year. So maybe he didn't I, really I, attend much either. Yeah, he? He just... I had I had Fyro at 33, so I, I still had him in this tier, but um, at this exact spot. Yeah, that's his that's his number. Oh, that's his ranking. Oh, then I have no I have no complaints <laughs> then. <laughs> <laughs> I had him at exactly where he where uh where he's at. <laughs> I just wanted to say uh, I joined because I wanted to play teams. I didn't know that there was rankings discussion. Forgot oh, about it. You can play teams after this. No, 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 I'll go with the flow, you know. Uh, I'm happy to join. I think Fyro is pretty good. I think 33 is a good spot. Yeah, I think he uh, probably just, you know, he, he was obviously more active last year, but he, I guess to all the voters, it seemed like he just, you know, had a decent year maintained about his spot, and they, yeah. you know, it felt fair to put him at that. Yeah. He was like uh, in the 20s, like the low 20s last year, wasn't he? Yeah, he was like 25, actually. I think he, uh, I think he can go up again in 2018 if he attends more. I, I, don't, I don't know what his plans are on that. Uh, he seems like a type of player. He's not like Nintendo dude where I think he's just out the door because of uh, he's not good. I just, I just see like Fyro um, putting his focus elsewhere. I don't really see him being like a a threat as in like going to much things. Unfortunately. I mean, yeah, he doesn't even go to much like New York things from like what i know like he, he attends like the the monthlies and i guess sometimes he goes to the weeklies but i don't think he's been to like the ranked monthlies that have been going on in nyc i think corby's kind of just been winning them so i'm pretty sure Fyro hasn't been attending not saying corby can't beat Fyro, but i imagine that's the case right now yeah kirby against ness is, is a killer I actually remember one comment about Fyro. I don't remember who told me it, but apparently uh, they were playing friendlies and Fyro went Pikachu and one of them was like, he like just destroyed this guy and he was pretty good. I don't remember the exact name. It wasn't just some no-name scrub. I don't remember who told so me. So Fyro that. went Pikachu? Yeah, he went Pikachu and then after he like destroyed the guy, he's like, oh uh, yeah, Pikachu is such a dumb character. I didn't have fun. He went Pikachu that. at ESB. Did he? Yeah, people don't know that. But uh, he went Pikachu versus Stranded, Stranded's Fox one game. It was like his last game, and because Stranded was like I guess beating him as Fox versus S, and then I, he whipped out the Pikachu, and I think that was the set that Stranded uh, just jumped off right after. Fi Fyro has a really good cast. Like he, oh yeah, he no. uses Fox and Link against. You're talking about Horby, like the Pika Ness matchup. I mean, uh, yeah. Kirby, Kirby Ness matchup. Yeah, he, he uses Fox uses and Link Fox, against yeah. Horby. Yeah, he uses Fox versus Horby. And I know Horby uh, says he can beat him, and he's beaten him before. But uh, his Fox is pretty good. Yeah, he's got he's got a wider range of a cast. I've always Fire's always been known for that. Actually, he's always had very good twelve character player. You know, interesting. If you kind of look at this list, sorta. A lot of these players are good with the cast, like a lot of them, like let's see, let's say Faro, KD3, uh, Narwhal, even Hero, yeah. I've, I've seen Hero Pie have a pretty decent cast too, Yulo, Stranded, I don't know about d but it's really, really interesting to see that, because I feel like uh, last last uh, pairings didn't really have much of that, they were, they were more known for like their mains, but I can see a lot of diversity in this list. Um, yeah, it's kind of like what KD3 was saying, where if you play multiple characters, you just naturally get better because you understand the game more. Yeah. So uh, I think getting good with uh, like two or three characters is probably optimal, because it's a lot easier to pick up the rest of the cast once you have your fundamental skills. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 I kind of play it by but, I kind of uh, play it by ear. Like, if I'm if I'm really on with a certain character that game that day, then you know. <laughs> I feel like it's good to stick through with it. Um, I, I don't think it would be a good idea for someone who's like relatively new to the game to come in playing all 12 characters or whatever. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, what I kind of did like when I first started playing is I, I literally just played Fox like for one whole year mm -hmm. and I didn't play anyone else. And then, um, then I started drifting to Falcon and then I played only Falcon for like eight months or something crazy like that. And then after that, that's when I started just playing everyone. 
So I think in the beginning, it's good to just play with one character and then you move on and yeah. Yeah, play like, multiple characters. Like, like, like Frey said, you get your fundamentals down. Yeah, like uh, right now, I'm kind of focusing on Fox Mario right now. I'm trying to get a little better with Fox because I... I remember Sheer saying it once to Lodo, who was also ranked here, that he doesn't have a, like a like a, a very usable secondary for like c matchups he's not comfortable with. I think it's really important. Like some players can do it where they're just like solo mains, but I feel like those type of players, they're so good and they're so no for their characters that it would just be a mistake to not use them in tournament. I think it's good at this level to have variety in your cast. That's how I feel at least. The way I feel is like similar, but I also think that you should be able to, you should know every matchup with all of your characters, because you're always going to end up in counter pick situations, and sometimes you might be at the like the the shit end of it. Yeah. yeah. So it's like that's why I still, even though I don't like certain matchups as like Falcon or Fox, I still try to learn them, even if I prefer a different character for that matchup. Right. Yeah, you you never know what people are going to counter pick in tournament. Yep. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to number 32. This man, I feel like he has the most we can talk about. Fire Blaster. Uh, he had such a such a roller coaster year in general. Uh, let me look at his results. It's like, oh my lord. Let's see. Fire. Blaster. You know, I don't think that this is as bad as like, his, like as maybe Fire Blaster feels. I know Fire Blaster knows that his results weren't like as great. Yeah, he's very self-critical. So. He, he knows it, um, but I, I still feel like his year wasn't that bad, and I think 32 is all right. I don't, I don't think he should be that upset about it. Yeah, people got to remember, like, even though he was, uh, I think he was 20, 24th last year. I think year, he was 24th, yeah. But but you got to remember, like, we there's some new, like, especially some top talent, like, Japanese players that came in and got ranked this year. Exactly. You know, so there, it's almost like he didn't move at players. all. It's almost like he didn't move at all, if you consider that. Yeah, I, th I feel like he, he didn't go. He didn't go that f like. F he probably felt that he went pretty far down compared to what he hoped to do. Um, but he's a little critical of himself. I think you know, overly critical he, of himself. Um, he actually has like he's he has two wins against you. At, he has one at boss battle and one at Keystone uh, KD3. Can you tell me what you how you feel about Fire Blaster as a player? Uh, Fire Blaster is a great player. Um, in our sets, he's uh, for the he he beat my Kirby one game at boss battle, but for the most part, he um, had had some issues with Kirby. Uh, he's really good against Pika. You know, you've seen you've seen him go toe to toe with you know Bark Sanchez over the years or Brody. <laughs> but, like a um, game of Murray glasses, Pika. Yeah, absolutely. He had a great run at Shine. Um, he almost had another game too. He he could have went up two one. I remember that. Uh, <laughs> So he, he had a really up and down year, but um, I, there were still a few tournaments where, like at Let's Go, he ran through every Pikachu. He 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 beat. I think did he beat Janko there? I think he beat Janko. Yeah, he beat Janko to get it to top um, eight at Let's Go. He he went through the Pika. He he went through the ladder. Like I forget who else he beat. Robert. Um, Robert. He yeah, beat he beat Ma Robert. Master Handjob's not as good as the last two guys, but still, he beat Master Handjob. He beat Janko. Robert. You know, Janko and Robert are both very strong players. Um. He lost to Robert at SmashCon, but I, I actually saw that he kind of like he kind of messed up in SD, and that kind of had a you know that kind of changed the game. But you know, Fire Blaster, if he's got one thing going going for him, it's that he's really good against Pikachu. Yeah, he actually beat Janko again at Gommel to get into the top eight again. Yeah, so he had a great Gommel, a great Let's Go, a pretty you know pretty good Shine. So I think he had a lot of good tournaments. His sets were, versus Janko were actually like really fun to watch, and I love the pop offs. Uh, he also beat uh, Y Bomb at Gommel, who like he's he's kind of a retired player now, but everyone knows that Y Bomb's still pretty good, so I, I would consider that a good win also. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'm looking at his like he just had such a roller coaster year. That's the best way I can describe it. He's like he's got so many pretty good wins, but also he's he's got like like kinda some weird losses here and there. Like he lost to Prime at Empire Smashes Back. I have no idea who Prime is. But Outside of that, like there's like a loss to like UK, and uh, UK is good though. I don't yeah, I don't think yeah, that's no. a horrible loss. Yeah, UK is pretty good from his results. Um, he might have who knows Fire Blaster might have a bit of a Samus problem because he lost to Mr. Sure and Hammerheart. Yeah, he also has losses to Antarctican and Ty Higgs at boss battle. Yeah, Antarctican's Q. Um, 
I don't I don't know like really what to think about that. Cause like Q just... has his moments where he's actually like hella good and then but Fire Blasters the yeah, same to, way. To, so to be Fire fair... Blaster probably shouldn't be losing to Q. No, but but to be fair, Q had a really good run at boss battle. He went he went to game three. I think he went out at like I think he got top thirty two, right? Oh yeah, it was like last stock versus uh The Z it? and C T G. Yeah, the Z and C T G. So that's it, nuts for uh, Q. Yeah, Q had a really good boss battle. So, you know, he was just on fire that tournament. But still, Fire Blaster has definitely a Samus problem. He lost to Mr. He lost to Mr. Sir at Keystone. Um, and we were talking about him and Hammerheart. Hammerheart at 5-1 and one against him. So. So, yeah, at Keystone, um, I remember he pulled out Pikachu versus Mr. Sir. And then uh, Mr. Sir ended up beating his Pikachu. And then he did the same thing versus Hammerheart at ESB. So I wonder if it's like... It, it makes you think it's not actually the character that he's picking, and it's just that he needs to shape up on that matchup a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, he, I mean, he has some... Uh, he has some good wins, though. Like, there were a couple... Like, Let's Go was a really good tournament for him. But did, he got top 8 there, right? He got 7th? He got top 8 uh Yeah, he got 7th at Let's Go. And he got 7th at Gommel. With that don't park on the grass and then he beat sheer madness at that's Seattle. a great win they split they split uh sets but it's still a good win for sure yeah 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 um what, what do you i actually i know fire blaster from his old days of uh playing on kyler because that's what he started but now he's just basically said oh i i hate everyone i don't want to interact with with facebook or kyler or discord or anyone he's just out doing his own thing and i'm not going to talk too much about it but I, I i don't mind fire blast and i do respect him as a player for sure and i think he deserves to be around this spot in my opinion because of just like you know the roller coaster year but even then he had some really pretty good highs for for himself yeah so let's move on to number 31 shalaka uh does anyone feel like this man got rated a little bit lower because of his loss to Yobole, or do you think he just had he didn't really have as good I think as he's he in around the right spot. I mean if you look at his uh his results just by placement alone, he tied Fire Blaster, who's ranked just below him at SmashCon, and uh placed ninth at Let's Go as opposed to Fire Blaster's seventh. Um you people That's might have been a little little critical I, I mean he, he did lose to yoba light at let's go he still ended up beating revan at the same tournament um, so i mean i mean i had shalaka at 25th on my ballot wow yeah i'm pretty high can you explain i mean that? it's just like that? i don't know I, I think the revan win is really good he also beat star king and i think even though star king is ranked kind of low i think that's a, a pretty good win and um sometimes with these like foreign players they just don't know certain matchups and yobelite's also really good at the high tier matchup so it, it's kind of like those two things put into one so i think shalaka i mean i can see him anywhere on this tier so it's like i don't i don't think it's a big deal that he's here and not where i put him but yeah he's roughly in the right spot he's I mean, yeah he's in the, he's in the right he's roughly in the right spot um I put him above myself just because I know I know like how good he is. Oh, I I think we just need to see more of him. Yeah, as far as results go, I don't think he had too crazy of a year, so I think thirty first is pretty accurate. Just for his results in twenty seventeen. Yeah, yeah it, it, if agree. anything, the, I think the Revan win could have propelled him a couple spots more. But at the end of the day, I think it was a pretty good placement. I mean, he, he also beat Czar, which I think is a really oh, good. Oh yeah, win that's too. that's a great win too. Yeah. I, I don't really disagree with them being in this tier, but I don't think he had as, as good as the year as he did in 2016, so I can understand where he's at. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, he uh, was great last year. Yeah, he was great last year. Uh, I, I have no idea what's going to happen as far as if he's going to attend the things more. It's really weird. I was looking at some of these people, and we are always, we're always talking about, like, at the end, we're always like, he will move up if he attends. And it's always like that, oh, the people just need to attend more, and it's just like... It's because there's so, like, there's so little data for some people. It's difficult really to get know. 
good wins on the board. If you yeah, it, it really one, is. One, so one it's like, it's like way easier to get a bad loss than it is to get a good win because you run into so many players at like the lower level than you do at the higher level or close to your level rather. That's why these waterfall tournaments are so good though. You know, you look at Genesis from last year, there was like no data to go off from, you know, at last Genesis. Like except for some of the head to head matchups between like a lot of the you know, like the top eight. I mean there was not yeah. a lot of data to go off of. It it's still like a similar problem with the new Genesis, like uh even with Waterfall. Wait, were they running Waterfall this year? I would think or are so. they going to? I would think so. Well, I what I was going to say is, like, even with Waterfall sometimes, like, the, the D1 players don't get to bump into that many people that are around their level until, like, later on. Right. So, I mean, Waterfall is very good for, like, the, the lower end, because then you get to see how many losses someone might have. Yeah, I guess for a huge tournament. Um, like, like, Waterfall for Keystone was great, because Keystone was roughly 70 people. So you had a lot of like really, you know, top tier matchups going on like kind of early on. You know, you didn't yeah, have to wait till exactly. top eight. So yeah, that it, makes it's sense. It's like the same thing with like ESB. Like I got to play you, Fyro, Fire Blaster, and I I could have played Stranded if he didn't like kill himself that one yeah. game. But it's like yeah, when you get to certain there's different types of tournaments. So you have like the big majors where you might not get any great wins, but you don't get any bad losses. If kind of just play your seed, and then that, you have that, like that this, was. That was SmashCon for me. Yeah, like, and then you have like the smaller ones where you have just way more data versus people your level, which is something probably like Keystone for you. Hmm. Or yeah. like uh, MVP versus Moms. Alright, so let's move on to number 30, Lord Narwhal. Um, a little speaking bit of, like, of MVP versus Moms. Uh, yeah, speaking of, Lord Narwhal had a little bit of a drop this year, um, but I think where he's at makes sense. Did he? He did. He was like 28th or 20th. He's a little. He's in. He was in the 20s. Uh, I, f I feel like that's basically the same, considering how many people are added on, like the one-time Japanese players. I right. think Narwhal was 29 last year, so. so yeah. So this did is probably like, a tiny drop. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, yeah. No, low. I know what you mean considering all the players that got added this it's year. It's probably a gain. Yeah, it's yeah, probably 30 is still great. So what I'm looking at here, and this is kind of in relation to Shalaka too, Narwhal only had two tournaments, and <coughs> he really, well, he had MVP and Moms, but looking at his ballot, he his losses are pretty much just who he should have lost to, like Prince Zero Alvin at uh, SmashCon, and then Mad. Well, he had a, he had a bad loss at Let's Go to Mad Rush, and then Brody, and then Tri and then Z. But, um, he ended up beating Mad Rush later at the same tournament, yeah, so he avenged he, himself. He did, he did, he did. So yeah, he just had a... I feel like he had kind of a shellacky year where he he didn't he didn't go to much. And he mostly kept his ground as far as like people he should have beat. But as far as wins go, he has good... He has pretty good wins. Like, he's got Lodo, KD3, Hammerheart... Uh, and then at SmashCon, I think he has he has Clubba, Roman, even if he's not ranked this year. So he's got he's got good wins too. But I think what kept him at this spot is the fact that it really his only bad loss was Mad Rush. And yeah. And he did super good at MVP versus Moms. Oh yeah, as well. he did. He only yeah, lost he to LD. Yep. He did. I had him. I had Narwhal at exactly thirty. It's starting to sound like they just used your ballot. <laughs> I guess, uh, the, like, the closer you get to the top, like, the easier it is to mm -hmm. to break it down. Yeah, I agree. So, I think, yeah, he had a he had a solid year. I don't know he what had his... a, hmm? He had a, a pretty good year. Um, he's streaming more, he's playing online more, so... Yeah. Uh, who knows where that takes him, if he's gonna start, like, improving or working to get better. I, I kind of see it the opposite. I think Noro's starting to slow down. Possibly, I, don't, I think he's could like, be. I feel like at this level where you're at, I think this this bracket right now, the one that we're talking about, is the hardest to move up to the next level. This is when it gets really hard, and this is where it is. this is where you pretty much you will you will stick around for a couple of months or maybe even years, depending. Like Fire Blaster has been in this like bracket of players 
for years now, and he's complained about it and said how he's never going to get better. But it's such a hard, such a hard like uh, bracket to get over. This this pool of players, and they're all great players. None of these players are bad players. It's just, it's just so hard. It's hard to make that leap forward. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like, like we can talk about like KD three for a second. How like he came out of nowhere and just jumped all the way up to number thirty four. But it's like. For him to jump up another tier, it's gonna take like something crazy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this, but, is, a good, um, this is a good I tier think, to be. I think like um when you get to this spot like pretty fast, like someone like KD3 has, it, it you probably have a better chance than someone like like uh let's say Fyro, who's probably been around this tier for a while now. Also, you probably have a better chance at getting to the next tier because of your your rate of improvement. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 just it obviously becomes way harder. That's why, um, like some people felt that I should have got the most improved player, but I think Zero really deserved it because he went from you know that that really tier, yeah, like exactly. he, he was high up there, but yeah. then he made that leap to the, to being able to beat Mariguas, You know. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of the um, people that kind of went from uh not this tier because he was definitely higher. He was like I think he was like seventeenth or he's in the teens. He's one last tier. Year. Up. So he was one tier up last year, and then like now he's even higher. Maybe He'll probably still be around the up. same level, but like rank or so. But he's still going up and up and up. So uh, I would say Wizzy also was in that discussion of most improved, considering he beat Alvin twice, and he beat Boom one set. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Zero definitely deserved that. It's really hard to make that next jump when you're yeah. already that good. Yeah, I remember talking to Shares about it, and it's like, yeah, Zero is like an elite player now. Like, you know, he, he's he's one of the one of the big boys, and he's here, so he's getting a bunch of ego right. boosts. Any, anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna talk Narwhal about Zero. Goes. Yeah, we're gonna talk we're gonna about, talk zero, about uh, zero later. Another time. I think Narwhal is uh, is a very strong, consistent player, and he's always been uh, a little bit under the radar, I think, compared to some of the players around this tier. Like, he doesn't get talked about too much. But I think if he continues in this year playing how he has previously, he'll be able to hold down his spot. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, he might just get like a, a really crazy win because he took a game off Alvin, not just once, but twice. I'm pretty sure he took a game off Alvin uh, last year. Yeah, he's certainly on the cusp of getting like a really strong win. He's taken but... a game off Alvin two Smash Cons in a row. Yeah, once off his Mario, I believe, and then this year off his Pika. So... He can definitely get that that really big win. He he's really high potential. Yeah, and if he, he has mo around, he has moments where he looks incredible. Yeah, he's he's got he's got the consistency issue I think, and his mentality a little bit. You can kind of tell without going too much into it. I think he doubts himself a lot. But he I never think. really. Uh, I don't think he ever really underperforms. Like I can't think of any times that he's really given an underwhelming performance in any major. Uh, maybe there are some where he hasn't done anything outstanding, but I think despite being sort of inconsistent as a player, like as far as his placement goes, he's always able to hold it down and uh, beat who he, you know, yeah, he yeah, beats beat who he who's should. Supposed to be. right. uh, beat who I think beat. he, I think like for him, he probably feels like he can do way more, and that's probably where like some disappointment comes for him. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like if he keeps playing, eventually he'll get like a really big win or even like surpass this tier. All right, so let's let's move on to uh, number twenty nine, Hero Pie. Um, I feel like Hero Pie is where he's at because of his loss to Combo. Like he was a little bit higher uh, last year. I don't remember how high, but I think like that Combo loss really propelled him a bit down. And I let me look at his results. He had a he had a really strong dorm park at the grass. So in 2016 he was looking pretty hot, and then like he just kind of. I think I think he like he's kind of in the tier of Narwhal as far as not like um like he he, he, he didn't go uh, too far down. He was 26 last year. Yeah, he 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 beat mostly everyone he should have beat, but he didn't really have like any amazing wins as far as i know let me look at his at his thing and yeah he's got like he beat high man that was his best win yep that's it um i'm not sure if he beat ctg at boss battle 
Snosa. I don't think he did at boss battle. He beat him at Snosa. Yeah, his uh. No, so, okay. Yeah. So yeah, CTG just went to like a lot of stuff. Yeah, but, hero, uh, yeah. hero Pie's losses are like Mariguas, Brody, Boom, Giaki twice, and Hio. Like you know, all respectable losses. So yeah, so I think what brought him down was definitely that combo loss. Uh, he went Mario and Fox. And I know Hero Pie is like basically a Pikachu main. Uh, that win versus Jaime is really, really good. I think Jaime is like, I don't know. Jaime has like this weird thing about him where he can just be like going toe to toe with certain people that are like way higher. So I think that's a really good win. Yeah. Yeah, Jaime is an amazing win. I agree. I, yeah, I um, I don't really know how much to talk about Hero Pie. I mean, I've met him, I've talked to him, but I don't know much as far as. A player i've always known him to be like in this tier but he, he's as... another player that has a lot of characters too yeah so it's like yeah pretty much this whole tier um I, I don't know him like personally i didn't get to play him at all at boss battle i wish i did yeah um any any thoughts kd3 Frey? i know you don't really I, I really I, I... don't know anything about Hero Pie. <laughs> That's fine. He's like some he's some he's one of the good uh, West Coast players, so that that really boosts him. I think it's one of West Coast's hopes. I, I played him at boss battle. And he uh, he had an awesome Mario. Oh yeah, um, no, yeah I'm, I'm kind of surprised that you know because that's a really doable matchup. I, Combo Blaze just uh, I didn't see their set. Combo just must have a good grasp on the matchup. Yeah, um, he played it really well. Yeah, and I don't know how was, I don't know how Heroes Fox did, but I know for a while Hero Pie was like a dual like a dual Fox Pika main. Yeah. And now now he's pretty much like a ninety percent of the time Pikachu. Yep. I but, think the matches versus Fox were actually pretty close, but I think Combo just edged them out. Yeah. I think he did. Alright, so now we can move on to someone we can talk about. Uh this guy, I guess. Warren Wu. I don't know hey, who Lo hey. is. What the fox? Are you talking about what the fox? Yeah, what the fox. <laughs> I have to scribble that out and say what the fox. Lo, go ahead and talk about yourself in your year. You want to? Um, I feel like I had an alright year. Well, I guess it's pretty good considering I wasn't ranked last year. Uh, I guess let me look at my wins and losses real quick. So, I guess, yeah, my worst loss would be Zar. I don't even consider that a bad loss. I think Zar is, like, a hella good player. Um, I put, I played him twice after I lost him a Let's Go. Um, I beat him one time with Pikachu. And then the other time I played as Falcon and I lost. Um, the only other losses I have are to, to Brody, where he double eliminated me at two events. Um, you also lost to Joshi. Last... Yeah, and Joshi. Um, Joshi, I already knew he was, like, hella good. I wasn't even like mad about it when I lost him. Like, if you guys watched that sh that set for his Joshi, I did watch that. Like, it was like, it was like he was beating up a baby. <laughs> That's kind of what it was like. Um, so I wasn't really upset about that. I knew he was a good player. And then um, my sets versus Brody. Um, my set versus versus him at boss battle, the first one. That was when I was like in a really like I don't really care mood, because uh, my hands were so cold. I was kind of upset. And I went Fox and I just got destroyed. And I'm just like, whatever. Let me just go Pikachu. And then we went to last stock, last hit. And I had the edge, but he I had the advantage, like, percent-wise. He was, like, at 90. And I was at, like, I think I was at, like, 10 or something like that. And then he just brought it back on me. It's kind of been, like, the case. Uh, versus me versus him. You, you had and, a really um, close set with him at... Yeah, at ESB, I had a really close set versus him. I went up 2-1. And then... I missed a jab grab. Like, I jabbed him, and then he up -beat right after. I should have just grabbed him. I don't know why I jab grabbed him. Like, sometimes it's just, it's better just to grab. And I could have taken it there, but then he brought it back on me. I'm not upset about it, though, because he's, like, he's a better player than me. I just yeah. need to get better at that. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Same thing I asked KD3. What do you think your strengths are as a player? What what, what defines low besides uh, a single hit up air with Fox? Because we're not going to even talk about that. But that's not... Um... <laughs> you... <laughs> I think the biggest strength I have is just uh, my ability to adapt. Um, it's it's kind of weird because I really I, suck, I really suck game one. Uh, I I dropped game one to like so many people that I shouldn't like drop just, game one to. Then you just put on a brave face, right? 
and then like and then like another thing that's i think is really good about me is my uh composure like i don't really get tilted um i had like three reverse three o's this year i reversed three o'd sheer madness i reversed three o'd uh sorry to put you on the spot kd3 at esb and i reversed three o'd czar actually at the monthly where i played pikachu he was up to on me so it's like i don't really get tilted so i think adapting and just just playing the game, not thinking about what's going to happen if I lose. I think those are my two biggest strengths. Yeah, I, I agree. When I when I usually play you, it always seems like you're really thinking about like the neutral and, and not in a Robert way, because Robert like thinks about it it's like how safe can I be? You kind of think you kind of like read out your opponent. You're you're a very read heavy player when I play you. Uh, Frey, what do you think of Lo when you play him? Thoughts? Uh, he's good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> Something I wanted to say though. And I was talking about this to Lowe in a DM earlier, is that I'm actually surprised that he was placed as high as he was. Uh, not because I don't think he deserved it, but because his highest win is Fire Blaster, who's a whole four spots below him. <clears throat> and usually when you see people on these rankings being placed like above wherever their best win is, it's because they're someone who was good last year and is like getting the legacy boost. And I, I wouldn't like, it just surprised me that uh, Lowe got the respect that he deserves as a player to actually be ranked here. Because as a newcomer to the rankings, I thought, you know, he might just be a little bit lower. Uh, no pun intended. Well, yeah. I think well, Lowe was a hidden boss last year, so at least a few people knew that he was, like, pretty... Especially if they played him before, knew that he was pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, this year, even though you only went to a few events... Um, you know, that got recognition, like, you, you you either met your seed or you vastly outperformed it. Like, a boss battle, you had a you had an awesome boss battle. You had a great, uh, you had a great ESB. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, my, like my let's go was kind of lackluster, but I didn't lose to anyone that I shouldn't have lost yeah, to. Yeah, you saw an okay loss. Uh, okay, let's hard, go. I, I don't really think Zara's a bad loss. So I'm... I actually out I actually outplaced my seed at every event. So yeah. even though I got thirteenth at Let's Go, I actually outplaced my seed. I was seated like seventeenth, I think. That's great. That's that's always good to have. Um before I move yeah, on um, before I move just on. one little thing. Um oh, sure. just to touch up on what Frey said, like um where I only beat like a fire blaster who's a couple ranks below me. I think the reason that I'm like this high it's not because like people think I'm like actually you know, 28th out of all these people. I think it's just because I have a positive record versus KD3, who was also in this tier. And then I, I beat Fire Blaster, who's also in this tier. And, and I beat Fire. Fire So it's like, and then Hero Pie, he lost to Combo, who I also beat at Boss Battle. So I think all those are kind of what made people put me at 28th. I actually had myself at exactly 28th, but I thought I was going to be around like 31, 32-ish. Exactly. So I, was like, I was really surprised when I was the actual rank that I put. But um, yeah, I thought I was going to be really salty, but it ended up being fine. I remember you. Like, I'm going to get really salty if I'm like in the last tier. I, was no, gonna... no, no. I, I thought I was going to be like 40th or something like that, just because, I don't know. No, been... never because know. you thought you wouldn't get the respect. Yeah, basically. Because like you're a newcomer. When you're, when you're not ranked from the year before, or if like people i'm not saying people don't like me but if people just like somebody else more like who know they might just put you below them just for that i don't know yeah. that's what i was worried about but i'm glad that people actually looked at like my results yeah 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 um, from, from playing you because we played a lot i think your like your strengths are you know like you were saying your ability to to adapt i've talked about that on twitter with you before um i think you're really good at edge guarding a lot of a lot of characters like if you guys want to if you guys want to see like you know you want to get the flow chart on how to edge guard uh, Falcon as Fox? Just watch his set with Combo Blaze at boss battle. <laughs> oh, funny story. When I play Fox and I do the flow chart, I get called low all the time when I ult as Fox. Oh, so. I saw you tweeting about that the other day. Yeah, it's just like I'm I'm low apparently. Apparently, doing the flow chart edge guard with Fox is now low. So congrats. I'm actually a little upset they didn't use that uh that clip. Well, Dark Horse didn't use that clip. And that was what the first one I sent him. Uh, me versus Combo Blaze, where I edge guarded him. Like I used like five different things just to edge guard. So that was pretty cool. Um, I did want to end up before we move on. What do you think your weaknesses are as a player? Because I, I do, I do want to get into that mentality uh, too. Like I said earlier, I think my weakness is just game ones. I I never really play like the matchup for like any any specific character. 
Um, I've been trying to do that a little bit more now, just so I can be better um, in game ones, obviously. Like, I played Nako at Boss Battle 3, and I played Pikachu. I, I suck versus Kirby, and a lot of people know that. So my game plan going in was, like, just play the matchup, do what Boom does with, like, the up airs to protect the top plat, and do down airs on the top of the platform. So th that ended up working out. Uh, I'm trying to get better at that, but I would say, yeah, playing certain matchups like textbook is my biggest weakness because I just don't really think about the game in that way. I think if anything, like you're really good at edge guarding a lot of different characters. Yeah, like whenever we've played the matchup, I don't think you're very good at edge guarding Kirby as Pika. No, I suck at edge guard, dude. That set that we played at ESB, I must have missed like ten edge guards. In yeah, a row. you. I, I the thing is like I just don't play that matchup enough. Um. But then, like, towards the end, I started getting it a little bit. I started waiting for, like, you to fall down, and then I hit you with a couple uppers towards the end, and I think that's part of the reason that it, it turned around. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we can move on. Yeah, to, uh, yeah let's go ahead. Let's move on to uh, someone that uh, Zero knows pretty well, but unfortunately he can't talk. We have 27 Stranded. Stranded's such a weird player for me i feel like he has the ability to be way higher and he has been before but it's just like <sighs> he just didn't really care about the game yeah, he just, this year yeah he just didn't care like he he, he killed himself on game five versus Fyro. he didn't want to play anymore he's just he's his ment he's got mentality issues i think i and think it, if you have a year like that um then and you can like still get ranked 27th, having a year where you just don't care at all. You're retired for most of the year. When you do go to tournaments, you're sandbagging and like killing yourself to avoid playing more sets, and you're still top 30. That's just a testament to how good he actually is. Yeah, yeah. everyone knows how good he actually is. Yeah. All right, so I, I want to touch up on this a little bit. Um, we had like this discussion of whether or not we should rank people like stranded. Or like fire blaster um even though that even though stranded didn't like perform as well as he did last year i don't think it's really okay to say that he just didn't care at all because if you look at his losses cared about he, genesis he cared enough to not lose to certain people right yeah. like uh let me go over his uh his wins and losses right now so at genesis he only lost to kisk and Oh, Kiyoshki, sorry. And Jaime. And then... Then he went to CEO Dreamland. Wait, did he go to CEO Dreamland? What am I reading? No, it's ESB. So then he went to... E so at ESB, he he beat Horby, he beat Cheers, he beat Dark Horse, he beat Fyro. Only, only DQ'd himself, and he lost to his brother. And then at Low Tier City, who did he lose to? Just Zero and Wizzero. He beat an ACL. And, uh couple other people so it's like stranded even though he doesn't care and he sandbags sometimes like at locals and stuff i i still feel like he tried enough to the point where he didn't want to lose to people that he can that can be seen like way worse than him yeah so i think that his ranking is valid um i think that if he tried more and wanted to put the hours in like he used to then he could definitely go up but i, I don't see a problem with him at this spot no i i don't i don't see it either as far as this year goes, yeah, this spot is uh, pretty much right where pretty he ought to be. Yeah, it's completely fair. Um, I don't know. Strand seems like the type of person who wants to be good, but maybe he got to that point and realized how much effort it is to keep up at that level. So he did just sandbag <clears throat> more and he's just, you know. Well, him and, uh, him and his brother have talked about it before. They don't like, um, maybe I shouldn't say they, I know that stranded is talking about he doesn't like the direction that it's that the game you know that the community is going you know like esports wise like he, he really wanted to try to commit to melee because he saw a legit future for himself in melee you know so i don't know how they still feel about that or how much they care about that but well i know kiro like still plays melee on the side but i know Kiro's putting more because at the end of the day his uh, Kiro's heart's like in 64. Like, he Absolutely. can play melee, but it's he, he came back to 64 for a reason. He streamed 64 for a reason. He probably still wants to be the best in the world, even if he hasn't said it. Um, stranded, I don't know where his headspace is at.
but I imagine he's still like 64 because he still comes to events. Um, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll tell us that he hates the game and he hates everybody in it, but can't fool us. Yeah, he can't fool anybody. He, he secretly loves the game, but who knows what's going to happen this year. Who knows if he shows up with his brother or not, but he's still yeah, I think his eyes. I think his actual skill, like, you know, he's in like the high teens. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. His skill does not. See, that's yeah, another I, thing I don't people know all that. Like, have you looked at the list that are in the teens? I mean, no, I haven't seen it. I'm just saying, like, he... No, like, well, I haven't seen it either, but I'm saying, like, the people that I put in the teens are, like, um, like, LD, Prince, Kiro, Isaiah, Taco, Z. Yeah, so he's, uh, all these he's people roughly that, in that uh, area. He's definitely, I, I don't think he's in that tier. I think he's in a tier below. So I'd put him in, like, a tier with, like, like, uh, like, Bark. Uh, who else could be in that tier? Like, uh... I would say he's probably better than D10, even though D10 is ranked above him. I, I could see we're trying to being above D10, but I put him like in the Bark Revan tier of players. Mm, okay. All right. So let's move on to number 26, D10. All I know about D10 is that on his Twitter bio he has Isai 2-1. So he's really proud about taking that one game from Isaiah, and he. He doesn't seem like a bad person either, so I don't think he means that in like an egotistical way. I have no read on him as far as a person. Not really as a player either, but I do remember I was watching SCLXIX or whatever. I remember thinking, you know, who did he beat? Because I think that was a good, like, he started he off beat, strong. He beat, I think um, he beat Kiro, right? He beat Kiro at Smash Conference. Yep. And, um... He's beaten Bark like multiple times. Yep. He's he's but, beaten uh, Bark at Colorado tournaments. He, he's like he's won Colorado tournaments over Bark, like double eliminated him. But um, what was it? I think Hero actually Hero ended up coming back and beating him like pretty solidly. So I, I would like to see that matchup again to see how D10 does. Looking at his um his wins, he he beat Kiro right, but he also lost to Kiro at Smash Conference, and then he actually lost to Brody at Genesis Four, and he didn't really have any. Oh, he, he lost to Jaime also. Yeah, but, he uh, lost to Jaime, but he depends did... how you look at Jaime. So yeah, lost to Hio. Yeah, he lost to Hio. That's crazy because Hio's a Yoshi, so it's like you would think that he would have like a decent shot he at took, it. He took a game. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, he he was he was a I don't know, dude. He he was a much better player. Oh yeah, he was great. He's a great player. Um, but even if he lost to to Brody at Genesis Four, he did beat him at Snow Sun. So I feel like that that win invalidated uh, his loss at Genesis, and I feel like that Kira win also really helped him. But outside of that, he's got some other. He's got a solid win in like Dark Horse. Um, I, I think I, I'll, I'll compare his resume to Lord Narwhal. Like, he, he kind of maintained his spot and didn't, you know, really lose to anybody, even though there wasn't a lot of data to go off of. You know, he's, he kind of maintained where, like, the area that he should be in. He's got some really good wins, though. With, with the wins that he had, I'm surprised that he wasn't ranked any higher. But then again, I can't see the rest of the list. And the only player we can see beyond this, he has a losing record, too, I guess. The head to head. Yeah, um... Yeah, I had D10 at 22. So I had him a little bit higher than this. It's real, real, real interesting. And, uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't have too much to say about D10 in general. I just, I just don't know him well enough. But he does seem like a very good player. Yeah, I, I don't know him well enough. Uh, he tried online a bit. Um, I wish he would've kept playing, but... I guess he just doesn't like the way it feels. But Bark, Bark told me a little bit about D10. Because, you know, they've played a few times. And, um, you know, he, he talked about, like, how, how good at the match, how good at the Pika matchup he is. He's really good at the Pika matchup. He um, like, has really good reactions, as uh, Bark was saying yesterday. Yeah, he just has good reactions with, like, like he always times, like, a defensive up tilt, like, perfectly. He always throws that back air perfectly, you know, to protect above him, protect his head. Um, so, d has that matchup, you know, down. But I know uh, Star King recently moved to Colorado. And Star King double eliminated him by beating him in the Kirby Ditto. I, I know D10 has some said he was having some issues in the Kirby Ditto. Um, yeah, but you know the Pika uh, matchup he's really good at. 
Yeah, so like uh, Star King beat him like once he moved to Colorado. So uh, that's interesting. I wonder if he'll like pick up certain things from Star King, learn the matchup, get better. Yeah, yeah Star King also has like, he's one of those up and down players where um, I, I've, I've heard Shear say before, like sometimes Star King looks, you know, like a top player and other times he looks way worse than that. Yeah. Um, you know, he had, he, had an, he had an awful keystone and that was partly due to some controller issues, but still, you know, and then other tournaments, like he had a great let's go. But yeah, um, but D10, I think D10, uh, what were some other wins that he had? Um, Kimmy, he also beat Dark Horse, which is solid. Okay. So the Kimmy win is like, I would kind of expect it. Uh, Kirby Mario is really hard. I mean, Mario Kirby is really hard, but uh, what Bark was telling me is that that the Kimmy Bros are like really, really good versus Kirby. So I guess that it that is like a pretty good win. Uh, I, I consider that over Kimmy Mario. Kimmy Mario is. Yeah, Kimmy Mario is like hella good. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I don't know. I just feel like the Mario Kirby matchup is just so hard. You just can't kill Kirby. You can't do it. Yeah, it's 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 really hard. I, I don't know how you edge guard Kirby. Like if he's not if he's not low, but um, yeah, I think Kimi Mario is a still you know even with the match that's a fantastic win. Yep, yep. So let's move on to our final man, twenty fifth, Jaime. Uh, Jaime, I actually last year I think Frey was there and I was saying you know I think Jaime has potential to be a little bit higher. I think was he twenty eighth last year, Frey or something? So I he, think he was higher last year. Was he? So I'm not 100% sure. Down. I can check that right now. Yeah, go ahead and yeah, check. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. I thought he was uh, like 22 or something. He was 23 last year. Oh, so he went down. Well, he went down a couple spots, but there's probably more Japan players. There's, so, there's so many Japanese players. Uh, it's like he basically went up a little bit or stayed around the same. Yeah, like last last year he was right around uh, Fire Blaster and Fyro, who we can see this year have gone to like the 30s. Yep, so let me let me look over his wins. He's got wins over Handsome Tom, Stranded, uh, Jimmy Joe, Nintendo, Madras, Finio. Uh, let's see. He had a super close set with LD at SmashCon as well. I remember oh, watching yeah. that one. It, he was up like quite a bit, I think. But LD he, made the comeback. Yeah, Jaime kind of messed up a couple times, and that's it. I remember watching that. He's wow. always done like pretty well versus LD online too. Yeah, he's he's such a good. He, his spacing is immaculate. Jaime's always been known as just so stupidly hard to hit. His spacing is probably like the most annoying thing to deal with as a player. Yeah, because he's not he's not you know obviously he's not very fast. He just doesn't commit to like anything. So yeah. it's like yeah. it's almost like well I don't know. Uh, KD3's played Finio a bunch. It's almost like that, but like ten times better. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. spacing Finio. really uh, comes out like at its best in teams as well. Because teams is an environment where you don't really have as much of a chance to uh, to be patient and deal with his inability to get hit. So that's like, I think that's part of the reason why Team Ahor has always been so strong. Is because it's always just so difficult to hit Jaime. And it, like, if you're in a teams game, you don't really have time to uh, to wait around and try to find an opening. So when he's able to keep you out like that, it just makes it all the better. Also, one of, one of the team strats is to go after the weaker player and steal some stocks. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to go after Jaime, and you know, rather than try to rather than try to fight Boom, but and Jaime, if he can just right, if he, if he can't just hit him, then Boom just comes in and you know starts wrecking. People. But so so Jaime, that that's part of you know that's just that's just one reason why he's such a great teams player. Yeah. Jaime is Jaime in my opinion. He really held it down, and I'm proud of him because I've always thought, like, I I have a bit of a legacy bias towards Jaime. I always thought like Jaime is right up there and can contest because he actually did beat Stranded. Uh, he beat Stranded. I, this year. I was gonna say that's actually he beat he beat Stranded, who you know no doubt cared about Genesis. Um, I think that's a incredible win, and I I honestly had him a couple spots higher than 25. I think there was one game where Stranded like five stocked him too. If I'm yeah. not mistaken, I think he it might have been Stranded game five stocked his Pika with with Falcon. So, so imagine that, like coming back and winning the set. That's, that's and this was also like Genesis was right after the 2016 rankings came out, and at that point in time, Stranded was considered to be like top 15, right? Right. 
Str yeah, Stranded was 14. Yeah, so it was just such a really great win for him. That, that's a nine spot difference if you're base, you know, if you're basing the upset on rankings. Because yeah. what, what was Jaime? 23. Yeah, Jaime was 23. Yeah, that, that's and you know that we know for a fact that that you know Stranded cared about that and was trying that tournament. So uh, that's that's one reason I had yeah. I had Jaime a couple spots higher because I, I held that win like in high regard. That was like the last hurrah for the Speziales. Yeah. That was the last tournament that they planned to go on before they like semi-retired. I think that win, as as well as like the D10 win, is probably what gave Jaime such a high ranking. Like outside of those two, he doesn't have any. I mean, he, wins he beat Htom, who's like arguably yeah, okay. like Htom is like a hidden boss, I guess, isn't he? Because he well, he was ranked last year. Yeah, he didn't. But this year, he didn't. Yeah, this year. Yeah, this year. No, but uh. Yeah, he was he was ranked last year. And he was and he was under ranked last year. So, uh, yeah, I would say it, I would say the H Tom win is uh, another good win for Jaime. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jaime just he he says his weaknesses. I'm pretty sure he's he hasn't said it to me, but he's he's mentioning. He feels like he's he's a little behind the youngsters a little bit and getting to that next level of becoming more than what he is. Like he struggles becoming, you know, picking up. The fast and the technical play and he's he's always just been stuck to his guns about you know the spacing and whatnot so i think he struggles which is why i think strand he's an, he's an even better win because he struggles against players like that the fast the fast players who just get in his face and you know don't give him as much breathing room as jaime wants because i feel where jaime excels he excels against players that give him the amount of space he needs to just simply win every engagement because of his spacing is so good you know i don't think that's wrong am i no i i don't think i think there's like very few people who can uh like contest jaime's neutral game ability he's really just that's like where he shines i would like to see jaime like play like higher tiers just to see how well he can do because I, I remember watching a pika dodo of him versus marie Gloss. He was like taking games off where he lost Pikachu. He doesn't even play Pikachu like that. Yeah, he like here is it's listed as like his one of his mains, but like how often have we seen his Pikachu like really? I yeah, never he's, played... he's mostly a Falcon Samus. Yeah. He never plays it online. He just and then like in tournament, I've seen the Pikachu like a couple times, but he's mostly like Falcon Samus. Yeah, from what I can tell. Yeah. I yeah, like... if I had to say anything, like just one thing to say about him, he's just like he's just really hard to hit. <laughs> We've all said that. He's yeah, no, so yeah, he is. hard to it's, hit. It's actually annoying. Yeah, it's so how hard it is to hit him. If I feel like if Jaime could could pick it up and far as like more technical, more speed, he could be a serious threat. And he's he is a threat as it is. But if he could, you know, maybe adapt that into his play style, I think maybe that's why he picked up Pikachu. But I think that's also why he can like, you know contest Marigos a little bit, but he can't win out because Marigos does have the speed against Jaime and Jaime. Uh, and Marigos is just a better player at this point. Well, too. if yeah, you look that's... at if you look at some of the things that like Marigos or Dexter have adapted to their game in the past couple years with Pika, it's like some you know the ledge cancels um, from anywhere. Like to get your you know after the up B, you know to get your shield up on a on a platform and not get hit. Like if Jaime could dedicate some time to doing stuff like that. Like if you watch Mariguas, he gets that at like every. If he doesn't go for ledge on the recovery, he's always getting the ledge cancel on the platform. Yeah, Mariguas is kind of like on a different level, like completely as far as Pika is is concerned. Like Mariguas is probably one of the better, like top top Pika players as far as a ditto. Like his edge guarding is insane. So yeah, I just think if Jaime, like like Super was saying, if Jaime can, um, you know, work on some things like that. Because he he has he has every other like aspect of his game. You know he's such a old school player. He has all the experience, and yeah. you know all the mind games and neutral and neutral knowledge. So if he can just work on some technical stuff like that, uh, I think he can really make that next jump. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't know if he's going to Genesis. Oh yeah, he is going to Genesis. So we'll yeah, they're see. gonna play teams. We'll see uh, Team A Horror. See what they can do. Yeah, apparently this is gonna be the last Team A Horror because Jaime's apparently pesos in Mexico just don't cost. You know it's just. It's worthless, not much money in Mexico right now, so it's going to be really hard for Jaime to come out to things, which is really unfortunate. Um, let's let's do closing thoughts now on all players. Oops, 
Let's do some closing thoughts. Right. Anyone? So my my closing thoughts. Uh, I suddenly got crazy hiccups, so this will be the last thing I say. It was uh, good to join in and talk today. You might see me tomorrow. Maybe. You'll definitely see me if Zero appears tomorrow, because I'll be here to rage about the atrocities and injustices committed by the 64 League, underrating him, <laughs> etc. Uh, so you think he shouldn't be on the next tier? No, no, he, he's got to be top 15. Top 14, maybe. I don't know. I, that's what I think. I am. Uh, you want to know where I have him? I should, I'll talk about it tomorrow if I'm Yeah, let's, let's talk about it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, closing closing talks. Any of these players? KD3? Uh, I, I thought I thought let's if anybody... Go, um, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Let's just go down the list like we did last year. Okay. I mean, not okay. last year. Uh, yesterday, where we just say, do we think they're going to go up or down? All right. Go ahead. All right. So let's start with you, KD3. Up, down, unranked. Um... I think, you know, Lo was talking about how, you know, my rate of improvement, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't even on the map last year, like at all, like, you know, I wasn't, I definitely wasn't on the ballot, you know, the top 100 ballot. Um, you know, la last year, Super Smash Con, you know, I think I tied for like, like a hundredth, something like that. You know, I was drowning in pools and, you know, I just think if I can, you know, keep improving uh, the way I have been, you know, I'm, I'm hoping I can just keep going up. I'm, I'm shooting for, uh, it's going to be really hard. There's a lot of good players, but, you know, I'm shooting for, uh, you know, I don't want to get overzealous, but I'm shooting for the teens next year. So, you know, we'll see. Oh, you're shooting um, for the teens? Or, you know, the low 20. I don't know. You know, you want to go as high as possible, obviously. But, you know. So you're motivated. You're you're just like, you want to keep going. Let's go. Give me the next challenger. Yeah, I just, I just feel like, you know, I made the jump from nothing, you know, not known at all to... To uh, you know, 34. We can debate whether that's fair or not, but you know, I think it's roughly in the right spot. And uh, you know, I'm just, I'm truly really excited to keep it going. I, I think that's a great mentality to have. To be motivated, want to prove everyone. I think that's what what got you here, actually. You know, that 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 drive. Well, yeah, I think you know, I think you know, there, there's going to be sp there's going to be times when I'm disappointed. and I feel like I can do better. Um, but you know, even even some losses like don't really upset me. Like you know, I lost. I lost to low and you know that was kind of a heartbreaker at esp because you know i got reverse 3 but you know i still felt like i had a great tournament and that was a really fun set uh even you know even times when you fail like i, I feel like there's always there's always really positive things you can take out of it and just you know improve next time i want to comment that i think that your mentality has helped you for where you're at i think you've got a good mentality about that like for me sometimes i get a little tilted at times and like getting 3 would like that would really kill me and like it'd be like I guess I'm just I just blew it and I suck. And I guess something I gotta work on. Uh, low. Yeah, it was oh, disappointing. No, no, you can, but you can go ahead. Okay, I was just saying it. You know, things like that are always disappointing. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I gotta. You know, after that, I thought you know, Low's a really awesome player. And oh, thanks. Dude. Even even like even like some of my other losses. Like I lost to uh, I lost to Dark Horse at Shine. That that was a heartbreaker. You know that that kept me out of top eight. But he's a good player, but, so it's like... But know. Dark Horse is a really good player. And, you know, so, I, you know, I, I try not to dwell on it. So, you know, I just think at the end of the day, there's always something positive you can take out even after some disappointment. Good man. Uh, Lo, thoughts on KD3? Uh, I think KD3 will probably move up if he just keeps going the way he's going. Uh, I remember, like, my first time I ever played him. Well, not the first time, because the first time I ever played him was at Neb's. And it was like a five game set or whatever. But the, the time, the first time I actually went to a local in PA, and then I was on the ride back with like Bill Bacon and I think it was Q. I was like talking about KD3 and it was kind of interesting because Finio was giving me a tougher time than KD3. But I told him, I was like, I think KD3 is the best in PA. I don't know if you were ranked number one at the time. I don't think you were. It was probably Finio. He was number one for a while. Yeah, and I was like, KD3 is the best in PA, and he's he's probably only going to get better. And that's how I felt. So I, I, I do think you're probably just going to keep going up if, if you, like, stick at it. But it's going to be really tough because of this tier. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, let's move on to uh, Pyro. KD3, up, down, and rank thoughts? Um, you know, he just, it was the activity thing, you know, he went to just enough to, uh, you know, maintain his spot. I think it was pretty fair. You know, there, there's some people 
Like he, uh, I think he can compete with some really good play. He he had a really awesome. I don't know if you guys saw a really close set with Prince at uh, at SmashCon, and we all know how good Prince is. Um, I think he has a lot of potential just because of how long he's been playing. Um, you just got you know you just got to think about it. Is he going to be active? So, I think uh, honestly, I think he might he might end up going down if he if he doesn't. You know, I talked to him a little bit at ESP, and it seemed like he's got some other things going on. I know he's really busy with work, um, so uh, he might if he uh, he might end up going down next year due to some inactivity. That's fair. Hello? Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same. I feel like he's probably going to end up going down because he just doesn't go to enough stuff. But um, I can see him for sure just like. Getting a really big upset on like heavier characters like Falcon or like Fox or something like that. Uh, it, it all depends on what his bracket looks like when he gets to these tournaments. But uh, I think Fire is a great player and he has the potential to move up for sure. Yeah, I agree. I just my personal opinion is that I don't think he's going to because I, don't, I think he's starting to slow down, and that's un that's unfortunate. But you know. That's what happens. I think when I think about players like Fire and I, I get sad, I'm like, oh man, Fire not gonna come to things. And then I look at like uh, the lower brackets and like all those people who who can can move up to these spots. Like those people we've talked about can replace Fire in the, in these spots. You know, it, everyone has the potential. I I believe. I think this is like th the best place to put yourself as far as like a goal to reach if you're on the rankings. This this tier right here. Do you guys agree or disagree? I could see that. I mean, if you look at the last tier from yesterday, I feel like there's a couple people in that tier that you can argue that they're just as good as the people in this tier. Right. Club is a good example. So it's like, and so it's like Sheer Madness or like... Sheer Madness, yeah. I know Star King has his moments where he's also really good. I haven't played him yet to like give my own opinion of him. Then you have like people like Kimi Maru also. So it's like, I, I would say that this tier specifically isn't like... The only like good goal i would say last tier well yesterday's tier and this tier are like a really really good place you want to be if you have a goal and you're like just starting up because uh the next tier is going to be like super hard to get into yeah and the, the very like first two tiers it's like almost it's almost like you don't the, the results that you need for like 65 or i'm sorry 64 to 55 it's like it's so hard to say because you, you need good wins uh, and you might not get them you might only get like a couple bad losses and like one good win or something something like that yeah that that happened to me where i just got i ran into fokuru and jose you know i ran into two kirby's at smash con that uh, was it <laughs> and um, then you you ran into horby at let's go so it's it, like yeah that, that, it's tough breaks that, that type of thing happens yeah um let's move on to fire blaster kd3 up down unranked um i mean if he follows through with what he's been saying as far as uh being in you know inactive when it comes to um you know ranked tournaments and he's probably going to go down you know, things could change. We, we know, you know, he's flip-flopped before, but, you know, uh, if he if he uh, follows through with what he's saying, like, I think he's just not going to go to enough to uh, be able to, you know, to be able to rack up some good wins. Yeah. Low? Um, I think, like, there's no world where Fire Blaster doesn't go to enough things to be qualified. Uh, for him, for that to happen, like, if you look at how many tournaments he's attended... He's up there with like the most traveled. Yeah, for sure. And I think he's always been like that for the most part. Uh, for him to just not go to that many events, he would have to only go to like one event, and I don't really see that happening. But um, if he does follow through with what he's saying, then yeah, he just he won't be ranked because he won't go to enough tournaments. Yeah. I can see Fire Blaster, for the most part, just sticking where he's at. If he does keep attending, uh, it's gonna take some real like change to improve. Cause he, yeah, he, he's so the only like, thing with fire, like, he just he has potential he to. He has potential because like he just like he took a game off of Alvin, he took a game off of Mariguas, so it's like there, but he also struggles randomly versus uh, different uh, players. Yeah. So it's it's kind of just a big mystery. I, I have no like real idea where Fire Blaster is gonna end up next year. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Shalaka. 
K83 up, down, unranked. I, I personally feel, I don't think Shellac is gonna go to enough things, in my opinion. I think uh, it's really hard. Uh, it's like, at like 2016, 2015, we were like really motivated to get all these donation drives for people and you know, get these people out, but we just don't have the same staying power as Melee does, I feel, in the whole money department, unfortunately. But I'm not gonna go into that too much, so just tell me, up, down, unranked, KD3? Uh, if he goes to enough, I think he'll go up. I think he's better than, like his, you know, his skill wise. I think he is higher than 29, or uh, whatever he was at. What, what is it, 31? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, if he goes to enough, I, I see him going up by a few spots. Like he's gonna, I think he'll go closer to the low 20s. But he very well, you know, like you were talking about, he very well might just not go to enough, and um, he he might end up going down. Lope. Uh, I, I just want to keep it short with Shalaka because I don't know him that well. So it, it just comes down to whether or not he attends, and then we'll see what happens from there. That's fair. That's fair. All right, Lord Narwhal. Uh, for me, I don't know what he's doing. I, he's another person where I don't know where his motivations are, unfortunately. Uh, I say if he keeps going things, he, he can stick around where he's at. Uh, maybe move up a little higher. I just, I just don't, I don't know if Naro is the player. I feel like Naro could, he could have the breakout year, but I don't know if he can, if he has the right mentality for himself when it comes to that. So, uh, K3, go ahead. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say that, um, like Lo was talking about earlier, I th I'm gonna say that he gets like a really nice win this year, because he has that potential. I think he's gonna come out, and I, you know, I don't know who it's gonna be, but. I think he's going to break out this year and have like a really nice win somewhere. Hello? Uh, I don't know about Narwhal. Like he, he's kind of another mystery. He's, he just doesn't go to stuff and he's always near things like, well, I wouldn't even say near things, but like, I know that the New York people contacted him for ESB and he just ended up not coming. I don't know if he had anything. In the way but he just needs to show up more to certain events and then he'll he'll rack up wins for sure yeah yep yeah, i agree uh, i would like to i would love to see narwhal at like an event like keystone or something like that oh yeah he would he would have a, he would do great like at he a would, he would do good and he's coasting and it would also be like there would be people there that are close with him like you have myself you have kd3 uh, star king was there last year I know Star King and him played this year, and I think Narwhal beat him, but it's like those type of matchups are always good because even though some people might be better than others, you're in a tier where you don't really know what's going to happen. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, Hero Pie, I, I don't know. Uh, he seems like a type of player that he can he can be here too, but I don't have too much else to say yeah, about him. I have so. no thoughts on Hero Pie, yeah, so I'm not even gonna say anything. It's, it's fine. KD3, any thoughts? Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know much uh, about Hero we don't, we don't know much about him. I'm sorry, uh, any West Coast people. Uh, we do know about uh, Low though. So uh, KD3 up, down, and ranked on Low? Um, I, think, I, mean, I, I think you're gonna keep moving up. You just haven't you didn't get to get to go to a whole lot this past year um but you know i see you having a stronger like what i don't know what the baltimore tournament this year it's going to be or you know if there is anyone at all but i would let's see you having it what's that let's go to probably yeah, yeah i don't know what it's going to be called or anything but wh whatever let's go to is going to be um you know i see you having a stronger run you know than this past year there um I see you having a strong run if you're able to make it out to Keystone, Keystone 2 this year. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you have an opportunity. I think you're just going to keep moving up. Do you do you think that, Lo, yourself, do you think you can make to the next tier? you think you can be in the 24-15 uh, uh, range next year? Or you think this is where you're going to be for a minute? Um, to be honest, I can see myself getting like to the higher tier but i can also see myself dropping because it's like this year i uh, the way my brackets worked out is that i faced somebody that was better than me uh, in bark twice at two events 
so it's like even though I lost to him, it wasn't a big deal because he was ranked ahead of me. Now I do have a lot of wins uh, versus the people below me, but it it just all depends if I can keep that up. Like I had so many close calls this year that I just need to work on my consistency overall. Like I, I'm I'm consistent as far as results, but I'm not consistent as far as how the sets go. Like I had to do way too many reverse three O's and like just really tight tight games tight sets and i think i need to work on my game ones because they might cost me next year if i don't like shape shaping up in, the, in that department um but i could see myself going up or staying where i'm at or even going down depending on like how many tournaments i go to and if i get a bad loss here and i can't make it up it, it really depends yeah yeah that's fair uh next up stranded i uh, I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I don't know where to start either. He's just—he's even bigger of an enigma than than Narwhal. Who knows what's going on in that kid's head? I didn't think Low has much to say about it either. I think he. Uh, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't have any thoughts on Stranded. I, I just want to see like what his mentality is going into next year. He, probably, he might not even play at all. Who knows? Yeah, yeah we'll see. Who knows? Uh, D10. I I don't have any thoughts. I think he. I think he's good where he's at. Uh, he might go to more things. He might not. Apparently, Bark Study is a broke college kid, so who, who knows? He's another going. player that like we. He just needs to attend more because he only went to what two or three events this, and he went to events where like something like a Genesis, where you lose to two people that are pretty good, and then you only get like one good win. So yeah. he he's hard to say. Yeah, he's hard to say. Um, Jaime, uh, I want to see him move up, but again, I'm worried about him as far as like his attendance again it's it's really weird because we've been talking about all these people and we're like we're always saying like yeah attendance worried about it and then we have you and kd3 who are who seem like you're, you're more inclined to try and go to things and attend so it's well, like, yeah I'm, I'm probably gonna end up going to like as many as i can yeah it's really weird i'm in a good spot you know we got we have the lab so you know we'll have keystone obviously yeah that's um, that's an we'll event have... i think i'm gonna and end up missing i don't my, think i'm gonna be able to go to keystone which is really upsetting my prediction oh, yeah, is that, that my prediction is that and this is just for me i think you two will either move up to the next tier or you guys will will stay in this tier right but maybe move up a little higher and then the people from the last tier might take a little bit of the spots i think there's a lot of people like in the before tier who could who could take up those spots like if jaime or stranded or uh shalaka you know people who i'm worried about not coming to things so that's how i feel at least uh as far as jaime goes i think he's <clears throat> pretty much in this tier like i don't want to say for good but he he was kind of in this tier last year so it's like i i don't see any real change in his performances um he loses to people like not not saying no shots at bark or anything but bark beats him and i feel like if you if you look back like two years ago and you imagine like someone like bark beating jaime you'd be like no way because jaime was like top three in north america at one point and now it's like he's just gone so much down he's like he's kind of been on a steady decline as far as how good he used to be and i i don't see him like moving up at all yeah yeah, I agree. But um, I think that's gonna wrap it up for us, guys. KD3, thanks for thanks for coming. Lo, always great having you here. Um, tomorrow, same time as usual. Hopefully, I'll have my stuff together this time. I'll have someone asking me to play Smash. Um, we'll have Jam Jar. For, I've said this like two times. Where I'm like, we'll have Jam Jar, but then he's always like, oh no, 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 for sure this day. But he he says for sure tomorrow we will have Jam Jar. And I think Robert will come back, so I think it'll be me, Lo, Robert, and Jam Jar tomorrow. So. Well, uh, tomorrow I actually will not be able to do it. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll... I'll be here for. Your... Uh, actually, it's cutting it close. I'll let you know. But... You let me know. I'll All right. Make it tomorrow. Yeah. All right. But yeah, KD3, great having you. You had some really good thoughts. I really liked your hearing your mentality about the game, and uh, whatnot. I really appreciate that. So thanks for coming around. Thanks for asking. Oh, and Frey, Frey might be here tomorrow oh, as yeah, well. Oh, Frey, yeah. Frey might be here as well. So that's going to wrap it up. See you guys. All right. I'll catch you guys. Later. Yep.